As a proud Jew of Israeli heritage, I cannot in good conscience remain a supporter of the Democratic Party. I'm gay and Jewish, and like most Jews, I voted for Hillary Clinton. Living in New York City, I was pressured by both of these identities to be the good gay Jewish liberal. But after observing the direction the Democratic Party has taken the last several years, I finally decided I had to walk away. Before I get into the specifics of my decision, it helps to understand why the Democratic Party has had such a stronghold on American Jews. Since 1968, 71% of Jews in the U.S. have voted for Democratic presidential candidates. This loyalty goes back to the 1880s through the turn of the century, when large-scale immigration of Eastern European Jews began. Poor and oppressed under socialist and communist regimes in their home countries, they sought the freedom and economic opportunities afforded by America. Migration from Europe increased as anti-Jewish sentiment heightened with the pogroms and ultimately the Holocaust. Since Jews interpreted Nazism as a right-wing reactionary movement, they came to identify anti-Semitism with the right. The collective historical Jewish experience combined with fundamental Jewish values can also explain why Jews identify more with liberalism. A history of being oppressed for thousands of years coupled with the biblical idea of Jews being God's chosen people and a light unto the nations has given Jews a sense of moral obligation to make the world a better place and empathize with the most oppressed and vulnerable. The Torah concept of tikkun olam, which translates to repair the world, supports the idea that Jews bear responsibility not only for their own moral, spiritual, and material welfare, but also for the welfare of society at large. Jewish experience and values have therefore attracted American Jews to nearly every important social movement of the 20th century, promoting such issues as workers' rights, civil rights, women's rights, gay rights, freedom of religion, freedom from religion, peace movements, and various other progressive causes that have played a major role in the Democratic Party for much of the 20th century. But the Democratic Party and what it once stood for is not the Democratic Party of today. The direction the party has taken the last several years has led me to question whether the Democrats truly represent the best interest of American Jews. Democrats have become increasingly radical, not just in terms of their policies, but in their refusal to take the rising trend of anti-Semitism within their party seriously. The 2018 midterm elections demonstrated how accustomed Democrats have become to progressive extremism. Newly minted Democratic Congresswomen and seasoned veterans seem to be vying for the title of most anti-Israel politician in recent memory. Minnesota Representative Ilhan Omar has repeatedly employed several anti-Semitic tropes that have accused American Jews of dual loyalty, that politicians are bought and paid for by the Israeli lobby, and that Israel is hypnotizing the world. The Democrats sought to address Omar's anti-Semitic behavior in a resolution, but refused to reference her by name and instead put out a watered-down, all-lives-matter effort addressing all forms of bigotry, whitewashing her anti-Semitism and the reason the resolution was proposed in the first place. Michigan Representative Rashida Tlaib has made similar accusations of dual loyalty and contributed to Louis Farrakhan's magazine, perhaps the most prolific American anti-Semite of the past century. Both representatives have embraced the anti-Semitic boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement, whose founders have openly admitted that destroying the state of Israel is the movement's unambiguous goal. Democratic leadership, while historically engaged in bipartisan support for Israel, has become increasingly hostile toward its most important ally in the Middle East. President Barack Obama, whose record on Israel was one of the worst of any president since President Jimmy Carter, normalized the Democratic Party's now souring relationship with Israel. On the other hand, President Donald Trump has shown himself to be the most pro-Israel president in decades. He appointed Nikki Haley as the U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, where she routinely defended Israel against an organization that demonizes and singles out the Jewish state every chance it gets. He withdrew from the Iran deal, reinstated sanctions, and designated an elite Iranian military unit a terrorist organization. After over 20 years of failed promises by three presidents, Trump recognized Jerusalem as the capital of Israel and moved the U.S. Embassy there. Trump's actions and the overwhelming pro-Israel support from conservatives and Republicans alike have demonstrated that Trump and the Republican Party are dedicated to representing the best interests of Israel and American Jews. As members of the Democratic Caucus embrace the BDS movement, anti-Zionism, and global conspiracy theories, as they meet with anti-Semites like Louis Farrakhan and Al Sharpton, and as they continue to be involved with anti-Semitic and anti-Israel organizations and movements like CARE and the Women's March, liberals often misdirect by blaming conservatives and Republicans. 
However, the forums where anti-Semitism flourishes today are overwhelmingly progressive and far less tolerant of conservative thought than Jew hatred. As a proud Jew of Israeli heritage, I cannot in good conscience remain a supporter of the Democratic Party. If you are as concerned as I am with the rising trend of anti-Semitism and anti-Israel sentiment within the Democratic Party, join me as I walk away.